Hello everyone, I'm Yearning, and welcome to this brand new series, where we will be making the game you're watching me play right now. It's Tetris, uh, we've got a piece that we can move around left and right. We can rotate it in both directions. The piece will slowly fall down, but we can make it faster with the down arrow key, or we can hard drop it and land it instantly. We also get this fancy prediction that shows us where the piece is gonna land if we hard drop it. And we can also see where the next piece is gonna be. If we end up stacking too many pieces and reach the top, it's game over and we've got our final score displayed. As you can see, we've got some pretty cool features going. It's also made in C++. Well, aside from the graphics that are displayed using Raylib, which is a C library, but that doesn't prevent our code from being modern C++, and one of the goals of this series is going to be to learn how to achieve that. Speaking of goals, this series won't focus as much on creating Tetris itself. We're going to be making it, of course, but we'll be focusing more on how we go from an empty project to a working and maintainable code base for a video game. We'll be using modern C++ features like lambda functions, templates, smart pointers, move semantics, inheritance and polymorphism, and all sorts of other cool stuff. The goal is to give people an example of how these features everyone asks you to learn about are actually used to create something tangible. We are also going to be working with a C library for the graphics, Raylib. Using a C library and making it fit in a C++ environment has its own challenges that we are going to tackle throughout this series. We're also going to learn how to use documentation and search the web to find what we're looking for. All of these skills are required for us to be able to eventually start working with AAA game engines like Unreal Engine. So, if you're familiar with C++ but still hasn't had quite the chance to learn how everything fits together, this series is for you. If these concepts are foreign to you, or you don't know C++, I highly recommend you get up to speed using Chile's C++ series. This guy can take someone from not knowing how to code to a good modern C++ game programmer. His series is very long and exhaustive. It goes from beginner, intermediate to advanced, then gets into 3D programming and maths. The whole channel is a goldmine. Link to his series in the description. Also, something to note. I want my channel to be kind of an index, where I will be referencing tons of good learning resources I find on my journey. So, if you already know this stuff I show, you can still kick back and watch me, and you'll hopefully still learn a thing or two. Alright, now that you know why you're here, let's get started by getting Raylib on our machine. A lot of people get reluctant when they hear that they have to install a library, and that's understandable because installing C and C++ libraries is notorious for being not straightforward. But today, we have the technology. In the case of Raylib, they provide their own installer on the official website that we can just download and use. It's pretty good, it gets the library files on your machine, but you still have to manually link with it in Visual Studio. But I have a better solution. I present to you VC Package. Uh, VC Package is a package manager for Windows, Linux, and even Mac OS, and it's gonna make our lives a whole lot easier. To install it, you can just follow the instructions on GitHub, or you can watch a video, whichever you prefer. Now that we have VC package on our machine, we should open the command line at the location of the installation. One quick way of doing that would be to type in the pathbar cmd, and that's going to open up the command line at the location. VC package has a huge catalog of libraries. We can use the search function to find what we're looking for. So we can go VC package search Raylib. As you can see, we found three different versions of Raylib. We're gonna be using the normal one. We don't need the high DPI nor the audio, but you can install the audio one if you want. To install the package, we just go VC package install Raylib. And this is gonna fetch the Raylib files and compile it on our machine. This pretty much guarantees compatibility with the compiler we use. We're still not done with the installation. As you can see, it only installed the x86 version of it. But we also want the 64-bit version. 
To do that, we install again, except this time we append at the end colon x64 dash windows. And this is going to fetch the 64 bit version of the library. Now that we are done with the installation of Raylib, we can open up our Visual Studio. I'm using 2019, but 2017 or 15 should be just fine. Let's create a new project, an empty one, and we're going to call it Tetris Raylib. Now we want to check if Raylib has been installed correctly on our machine. If we go to their official website, in the examples section, they provide us with the code for a basic window. We can just open it and copy it. Go to Visual Studio. Create our own main.cpp file. So main. And paste the code in here. Now all we have to do is compile and run. And as you can see, it works. VC package is magic. All we had to do was include Raylib. Now there are a couple things we want to do. We should right click the project, go to properties. In general, um, in the configuration, select all configurations and all platforms. And in the C++ language standard, we should select C++17 because we're going to be using C++17 features. If you have noticed, when we open the window, we've got this command line that opens up. It's pretty useful for debugging purposes, but we would like to remove it in release mode. One way of doing that would be to go to properties again. And in linker, we go to system, make sure you're in release mode. And instead of console, we select windows. When we do this, the compiler is going to look for a different entry in our program, which means that it's not going to use the main function we defined. One way to fix that is to go to advanced, and in entry point, we go main CRT startup. And this is going to tell the compiler to use our main function. So now if we go to release and launch, the window opens up without the command line. And we are pretty much ready to start working on our game. Join me in the next video where we're going to explore what we can do with Raylib and start laying the ground for our game. Thank you for watching, take care, and see you soon.